Now that you have some background on what e means, the number e, we're going to take a look at how the graph of y equals e to the x looks like. And how we're going to figure this out is actually just using an input and output table and then graphing what that function looks like. All right, let's go ahead and start. So um, how I fill in my table right here, usually you want to put zero at the middle. Um, zero, I'm going to put slightly in the middle, but not really. It's kind of somewhere in between there. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my numbers around it. Usually um, your data tables are going to look the same. So you're going to usually be using the same numbers. All right, so now we've got to use substitution. So we know my function is y equals e to the x. Instead of x, though, I'm going to substitute negative 2 here. Great, so now I just got to know what that number is. Well, I don't know. So here's where a handy dandy calculator comes in. Okay, so you're going to use your calc. You should have this in front of you. I know it's kind of blurry, but e to the x is right here, and it's in blue. It's where the LM button is at. You're going to put second and then this button. So second and then the LM button. Sorry, my calculator is not even on. So you're going to push second ln, and you're going to see your e function. How do you put the negative, though? You will not put this minus sign. You're going to be putting this negative, this negative button right here. So you're going to push negative, and then it's 2, and then you hit enter, and you're going to get this decimal number. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Maybe I'll round mine up to four, decim four places here, so it's a point... One, three, five, three. Once you get the hang of it, you could continue to fill in your own table and just skip all this talking. I'm going to continue to fill in this table for those who need that one-on-one -on -one support. The next value I'm going to substitute is y equals e to the negative 1. So I'm going to be using my calculator. Again, the same way I did it. I'm going to push my blue button, and then I'm going to press ln right here, and I get my e function. Now I'm going to put negative and then 1, and then I'm going to hit my um, enter. So this is uh, e to the negative 1 is 0.3679 if I round it. Okay. The next value I'm going to do is y equals e to the 0 power. So this I could use my calculator or I could use the fact that anything or any number to the zero power is equal to one. All right, next up, we're gonna plug in one, e to the first power. Well, that's just equal to e. And I know uh, from the videos, you saw that e is equal to 2.71 and some other stuff. And then if you forgot, you could just enter this in your calculator, figure out what e to the one is, is 2.718. Next value, we're going to do plug in the squared here. So e squared, I will be using my calculator for. And that's 7.389. Lastly, e to the third power. That's about 20. And that's going to go off our graph, and that's OK. Whatever. OK? So there are, here is our input output table. Let's go ahead and see what this graph therefore looks like. All right, so at negative 2, when x equals negative 2, my y is 0.1353. So that is a very small number. It's, a, it's less than 0.5, so it's less than halfway up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a dot very, very close to the x-axis. All right, when x equals negative 1, it's 0.3. 679. Again, this is a small number. It's less than halfway up here, but it's also a little more than this part, so than this point. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my next point close to that other point in distance, but not as much as 0.5. And this kind of looks like 0.5, but it should be less. Now, when x equals 0, my y is 1. When um, x equals 1, my y is 2.78. So when y is 1. X is 1, we got 2.78. It's more than halfway up. When my X is 2, you got 7.389. So hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
five, six, seven. Okay, so seven's up here. So then this point is 7.3 up here. And then when x equals three, we know that was 20.08. That, that's gonna go all the way off our graph. Somewhere imaginarily up there, whatever. Okay, so great. Now we're gonna go ahead and draw our curve and see what this looks like. Yep. Try your best to connect these with a smooth curve. This, since it's off our graph, try not to put too much attention that it looks a bit crooked. All right, so now I'm gonna draw this side now. Sorry, should be more, there we go. So then over to this side, we wonder what happens. So actually, if you were to keep going here and keep inputting negative numbers over in this direction, you're gonna notice that the numbers just keep getting negatively smaller, but never reach zero. So actually, this is just gonna get very, very close to the x-axis, but never ever touch it. That's what you call an asymptote. So this is what the graph looks like. Good, so that is how um, the, the function y equals e to the x looks like, and that's its growth. Let's talk a little bit of its properties on the next page. So basically the function e to the x is an exponential function with the base e. Let me remind you, an exponential function is a function that has its exponent as a variable. So for example, y equals 2 to the x, that is also an exponential function. And it also has a similar graph to the one that we just did. Um, again, it makes it exponential because its exponent is the variable. Exponential graphs grow by a percentage each time. So when we talked about exponential graphs, when we were comparing linear quadratic and exponential, we learned that exponential graphs grow by a percentage amount each and every time. In our discussion of logs, we have that the inverse of y equals e to the x is the function y equals log base e x. So again, this comes from the formula. If I do my little loop trick, let me just erase this. To do the loop, you start at the base, you go towards the equal sign, and then you go to the exponent. So this can be rewritten as log subscript e big Y equals x, which again is exactly what this means. So the inverse of this function is the log function. But remember, we don't write log base e. Conventionally in math, the proper notation is to write y equals ln x. All right, so how does the graph of y equal ln x look like? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I sure don't want to take my time putting all these values in the calculator all over again. I am actually going to be using the, pro the property that this function right here is the inverse of y equals e to the x. And if you guys remember, when we learned about inverses, they mean that the x and y values switch. Since I already have this graph, that means I already have this ln graph because all I gotta do is switch these values. So let me go ahead and pull that up again. It's in your notes. This was, and then I know for you guys it's stapled. But here we go. Let me make sure this is straight for you guys. What I'm going to do now is because I know the inverse, I'm just going to flip these values. So this is going to go right here. 0.1353 is actually now y equals negative 2. So see, all I'm doing is just flipping them because I don't have to do all that work. If I know that the ln function is the inverse of this function, then all you gotta do is flip your data tables. And it's one zero, 2.718, one, 1 1.389, it's two, and then we got 20.08, which is just three. Okay, so again, this was me using the old data table. Um, and I'm hope, hoping, because I didn't staple mine, but yours is 
pretty much stapled. So you're going to probably have to look back and copy it on your own. All right, so let's go ahead now and graph this and see what this, what does the ln x function look like? All right, so when x is 0.1, 353 3, we have that y is negative 2. So when x is very close to 0 we have that the y is negative 2 so I'm just going to put that very close there. When x is uh, 0.3679 um, which is again less than halfway in here we get that the y is negative 1. Okay. When x is 1 my y is 0 when x is 2.718, that's around here, my y is 1. And that's going to be right here. When x is 7.389, so again, 1, 6, 7, 7.389, that's like right here, the x becomes 2. And then when x is 20 point something, which is somewhere down here, we get that it's 3. So three is um, right here. Just imagine that the 20 point blah blah is down there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a sketch of my graph. And then again here, you'll notice if I were to have extended my table, if I kept, if I kept choosing smaller and smaller values of x, um, you're going to notice that this right here approaches the y-axis, but will never, ever touch it. So it gets infinitely close, but it never touches it. Again, there's an asymptote going on here. And you would figure that out by just plotting a bunch of points and seeing that it just never crosses. So I'm trying my best to make this nice and dark for you guys so you guys can see this. That's how your graph should look. And by the way, it makes sense because if this is uh, the original function, this is the inverse, as you could see, they're a reflection. They're reflected about. All right, so there's y equals l and x function. Great. So now we know how these graphs look like. And this is what we've been using when we've been learning about logs.